Here's our first example. Y is equal to the tangent of x over 2. So we said the first thing we want to do is find our asymptotes. If we look at this expression, we have x over 2, and that is really minus 0, if you think about it. So this is our bx minus c, and that is equal to pi over 2. So we want to solve for x. We're going to multiply both sides by 2, and x is equal to pi. The other equation was x over 2 is equal to negative pi over 2, and also here we're multiplying both sides by 2, and x is equal to negative pi. Those are going to be our two asymptotes. So now let's set up our coordinate plane first. Here we go. So one asymptote goes through pi, and the other asymptote goes through negative pi, and between that we're going to put our points. So remember, the points we use are negative 1, 0, and 1. Our dilation in this function is 1, so no changes, and our vertical shift is 0. So we can go ahead and use our values, negative 1, 0, and 1. The 0 is the easiest one to use. It's going to be right in the center between the two asymptotes. Then in the center between the 0 and the left asymptote, we got the negative 1. And in the center between the 0 and the right asymptote, we got positive 1. And now we can graph our tangent function. So what is our domain? x such that x cannot be equal to pi. x cannot be equal to pi and if we look here at our two asymptotes, we see that there is a distance of 2 pi between them. That means the next asymptote is going to come 2 pi more to the right and 2 pi to the left. That also effectively means that our period is 2 pi, so we should note that down. And that will bring us a new asymptote every time we get 2 pi further to the right or to the left. So multiplying that by our integer k. The range, as always, is all real numbers. Let's move on to our next example. y is equal to 2 times the cotangent of x over 3. Our bx minus c is again this expression, but now we have a cotangent. So the equations for the cotangent are different. Remember, we have x over 3 is equal to 0, and x over 3 is equal to pi. Now multiplying both sides by 0, we get x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 3 pi. Those are our first two asymptotes. Our first asymptote is at 0 then, and the next one is at 3 pi. Before we plot our points, a is equal to 2. Our vertical shift is equal to 0. There is no vertical shift. And our period, as we have seen from our asymptotes, is equal to 3 pi. Then let's go and place our points. In the middle between our two asymptotes, we got our 0. And since this is the cotangent function, we got our positive 1 to the left and our negative 1 to the right. So and since this is a cotangent function, we got our positive 1 to the left. But with a dilation of 2, that makes it a positive 2 and our negative 1, which is now a negative 2, to the right. And now we are ready to graph our cotangent function. What's the domain of our cotangent function? x such that x is not equal to... Remember we said the 0 we don't have to worry about. The next one is 3 pi and 
every further 3 pi, that being our period, is going to be another asymptote. And the range is equal to all real numbers. All right, on to the next example. Y is equal to the tangent of the quantity of 2x minus pi. So now we finally do have a C in this expression that will lead to a horizontal shift. Since this is the tangent, our e equations are 2x minus pi is equal to pi over 2. And 2x minus pi is equal to negative pi over 2. Solve it like an equation. We add pi on both sides. We get 2x is equal to 3 pi over 2. Multiplying both sides by 1 half, we get x is equal to 3 pi over 4. Our other equation, after adding pi on both sides, we get 2x is equal to pi over 2. We had a negative pi over 2 adding a whole pi, so 2 pi over 2, we get 1 positive pi over 2. Now we multiply this by 1 half, and x is equal to pi over 4. That means our asymptotes are at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, very close together this time. And before we put down our points, what is our dilation? Our dilation is 1, so we don't have to worry about that. Our vertical shift is 0, and our period, as found out, is pi over 2. Keep that in mind for our domain later. Now, our points. Our 0 is right in the center between the two asymptotes. Our negative 1 is to the left and a positive one to the right. And here, those are tangent function. The domain is x such that x is not equal to pi over 4. And the next one comes after another pi over 2. So plus pi over 2 times k. The range all real numbers. And on to our last example. y is equal to negative 3 tangent of 2x plus 1. And please note that there are no parentheses around the 2x plus 1. And what that means is that 2x is really the expression we need for our asymptote. That's equal to negative pi over 2 or 2x is equal to positive pi over 2. Multiply both sides by 1 half. We get x is equal to negative pi over 4. And x is equal to pi over 4. These are two asymptotes at negative pi over 4 and at positive pi over 4. What is our dilation? The dilation is negative 3. A vertical shift, we do have a vertical shift this time, that is positive 1. And our period is pi over 2. Okay, then let's get ready and place our points. We got a 0 right in the center between the two asymptotes, except now this time it's not a 0. It goes up one step because of our vertical shift. And then we got our negative 1, which is multiplied by negative 3. So not only does it become 3 times as large, but also it gets flipped up and lands somewhere up here. And we got a positive 1, which also gets multiplied by negative 3 to become a negative 3 and lands down here. That's all we need to graph 
our tangent function. And interestingly, as you can see, a tangent function with a negative dilation looks just like a cotangent function. All right, then. Last but not least, let's get our domain and range. The domain is x, such that x is not equal to pi over 4 plus pi over 2k, pi over 2 being our period, and our range, as always, all real numbers. All right, you guys, you did it. We looked at a whole bunch of examples of tangent and cotangent functions and explored how do those functions and the graphs of them change if we have different dilation, if we have different periods and vertical or horizontal shifts. Great job, you guys, and I will see you in class.